Hey there folks, watch this video and here I'm going to be talking about a new WRC calendar uh, that's just been announced by the WRC promoter and it means we're going to have 8 rounds this season. Uh, the season will be getting back underway in September, 4th to 6th September with Rally Estonia, brand new event. Uh, that will be followed by Rally Turkey in its original 24th to 27th September date. Uh, before we head on to Germany for the 15th to 18th of October, we go to Italy, which will be moved into Wales Rally GB's slot, as was speculated, of 29th October to 1st November. And then a finale in Japan, 19th November to 22nd November. In this video, I'm going to be talking about this. I'm going to talk about the introduction of the new event in Estonia. And I'm going to be talking about a couple of things that I think are talking points from this. So first up, this announcement, 8 rounds, that is very much like the kind of golden figure that the FAA are giving to be able to give championships the World Championship designation at the moment. That's why F1's revised calendar was the first 8 races. That's why WTCR, even though it's all being raced in Europe, planned 8 events. Because you've got special dispensation from the FIA to say, yeah, you can only race in Europe if you want to still get a World Championship. F1 kind of has the same thing, but they're planning on going into other continents later in the season. And as the rallies themselves, well, I'm a bit gutted that Rally Ypres isn't on there. Um, the main reason was supposedly because of um, it being back-to-back -back with Rally Turkey should have run in the date that they wanted to run in. I hope that it will be a bit like Estonia in that it's kind of a promoter event. Uh, but I sadly won't be getting my hopes up about that. But Rally Estonia is a good rally to add to the calendar. It served as a WRC promotional event. We've got Oit Tanak uh, in the field as well. And actually, it would be quite interesting to see who would perform well there. I've got my eyes set on three drivers. One of them, of course, Oit Tanak. Uh, another one, Elfin Evans, who, of course, ended up getting his injury last season at Estonia. And the other one being Kalarov from Pera. Reason being, it's going to be, for many drivers, a new event. And at the same time as it being a new event for many of the drivers in WRC, in terms of characteristics, it's very much a high-speed event. It's similar to some rallies like Poland and Lipaya uh, in Latvia, but it's also quite similar to Rally Finland. And I'd said that Kala's best chance of getting a win in his debut season in the top flight would have been somewhere like Rally Finland. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw those three on the podium. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw either of those three winning. I couldn't really put my finger on which one I reckon it would be. I'd likely say Tanaka's home hero, but at the same time, the Toyota has been really fast over these roads. But at the same time, Hyundai's been developing, but you kind of get the picture. Um, in terms of the remaining rallies after that, Turkey, Germany, Italy, and Japan... Japan is, again, another kind of curveball. It's a tarmac event, so you could expect, um, I'd say, OJ and Neville to do quite well. But it depends on who Hyundai also bring in, because remember, you've got a roster of multiple drivers. You've got Sorda, you've got Loeb, you've got Craig Breen. And Sorda and Loeb have got particular round requirements on their contracts, which will have to be adjusted because they won't be able to meet what's required of them for the remainder of the season, unless they're doing every single rally, I believe. Because I think it's something like 7 and... It might be 7 and 7, I think it, but I think it's 7 and 6. And they've both only done 1 so far, with 5 left. So... Could we see a Hyundai B team? Maybe. I don't know. Um, it could That could also be a way in for Patton. Um, it could also be a way in for Lube, because Pierre-Louis Lube was supposed to be... In a Hyundai B team with Hayden Pandon. You can check out my video, talk about that in the description section down below. But yeah, then Turkey. Um, Toyota have had mixed fortunes. They won the first one back, even though it's the most fragile car on the toughest rally. But at the same time, last season didn't go too well for them. Last season, it was Citroen, who again had the reputation as the most fragile, who did quite well. So Hyundai and M Sport are going into this as the kind of underdogs in a way. Um, even though I'd say they're very much the favourites. Germany, um, well, every team I think's been winning there now. Um, so, I don't really know who I'd say would pick up the win. I'd likely say it could be Toyota, OJ and Evans, 
but at the same time, again, depends on today's uh, lineup for Germany. Italy, um, we have to remember Toyota had issues last season. And, like I said, Japan's an unknown. Don't really know what's going to happen there. What I'll say is it's going to be an interesting end to the season itself. I can't really tell you what I think is going to happen in terms of the championship, because... Uh, well, if we have a look at the standings right now, we've got OG on 62, Evans on 54, Neville on 42, Robin Perra on 40, and Tanak on 38. So could we see OG getting number 7? Maybe. Uh, could we see Evans fight for the touch? Definitely. Neville and Robin Perra, and even Tanak, I'd say, are still in the running. Say so after that with Sun and Lappy, maybe not so much, but I'm ready to be proven wrong on that. Anyways, what are your thoughts on the UWRC calendar? Let me know in the uh, comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.